trout rods, salmon rods, striper rods, helmet rods, downrigger rods, lead core rods, spinning rods, and more. If you want a high quality, high performance rod that won't let you down out on the water, go to fishhuntshoot.com and check out our selection of high quality, high performance fishing rods. So I'm up here in the high Sierras. Um, it's early afternoon. I got a little breeze kicking up. I've been, uh, I've been fast trolling this morning. Um, of course, I'm in a pedal powered um, Hobie kayak. So I'm looking to slow down a little bit. I got surface chop, the trout are very active, and I'm, I'm putting on a lure that I control slow, but that has a ton of action. And it's a lure that a lot of guys overlook these days. And I'm talking about the little F5 flatfish. This one's gold. I'm gonna run this one down, oh, about 12 feet or so. That's one rod. And then on my other rod, I have the same lure, again an F5 flatfish, but I just have the pure chrome version. And this one I'm going to run down, oh, six or eight feet. So put these in the water, we're going to troll these right out about one mile an hour and uh, we'll see if this old school lure can still produce trout in 2019. I already know the answer to that, they can produce a lot of trout, a lot of vibration a lot of flash and uh, the trout, particularly the rainbows, they really dig them. So let's get these in the water and, uh, and see what we can do. Well, wouldn't you know what my GoPro conked out, but there you go. Flatfish getting it done. Works just as good today as it ever did. <laughs> Anyhow, well, with my, uh, with my battery gone, I guess we'll have to finish up this discussion of flatfish back in the studio. Well, that was a bummer. The GoPro died on me. Um, anyway, I've probably been trolling that uh, that pair of flatfish for maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes when that gold one just got slammed. Um, anyhow, I gotta go figure out my GoPro issue, but uh, if it was still working, we'd uh, we'd still be trolling here. I was gonna troll all the way back up towards the ramp, and if it was good, I was gonna continue trolling. But anyway, um, don't overlook the flatfish. It's old school, but guess what? They still catch fish. They're a great lure at low speeds. If you want to keep a lure in the strike zone, you want to run something that has a ton of flash and vibration. You're out looking for rainbow trout, browns, brookies, whatever. Put on a flatfish, put on one of those small flatfish. Um, they work great, fish don't see them a whole lot, and uh, when the fish are in the mood, man, they will smack a flatfish. Anyhow, we'll talk a little bit more about them back in the studio. I'm gonna get this kayak loaded up and I'm gonna go grab me some. Okay, folks, I'm back home and I just wanted to finish up my thoughts about flatfish. There's that gold f5 flatfish that you saw me uh saw me hook up on out on sugar pine reservoir when i was trolling from my kayak and i would have caught several more fish had my gopro battery not uh not wore out on me anyway let's talk a little bit about different sizes of flatfish and different colors before we do that what you'll notice when you get a flatfish is you'll notice that there's a little there's an orange flatfish see that little eye that hangs down there that is intended for you to tie your line to because they don't want people tying their line directly to the eye of the lure because that kills the action. Nevertheless, I don't tie them on directly to my line. I still utilize my little lock snap, which you can see right there, which is how I would rig a spoon or pretty much any other lure. I just like having the lock snap on there. It saves me a lot of time. I tie that lock snap on with a nice secure Pelomar knot and then I could change colors, sizes, whatever I want to do, I could do it really quick and it uh, just makes for an efficient system. You still want to be running, got my trolling swivel up here, you still want to be running a trolling swivel because if you get going too fast with a flatfish, it's going to roll on you. So that's your insurance policy up there. But if you, if you keep them between, my, my key speeds for flatfish are about 0.08 all the way up to 1.5. Um, you won't have any problems, but you still want to run that swivel. So, one of the reasons that flatfish are so effective, I'm going to set this rod down. 
One of the reasons they're so effective is that it's a lure that stays in the strike zone for an extended period of time while putting off a ton of flash and a ton of vibration. Flatfish are not subtle lures. They're about as subtle as hitting a garbage can with a hammer. I mean, this is a lure that just, just stays, stays there, you know, in, the, in proximity to the fish for a long time. And it's just screaming, hit me, hit me, hit me. So anyway, and that, a lot of times that's what you want. If the fish is slow, that's what you want. If the fish are active and you want to troll slowly, that's what you want. You want a lure, lots of flash, lots of vibration, lots of ability to attract fish and get those curiosity strikes. Now, in terms of color, I don't see a lot of guys, well, I don't see a lot of guys fishing flatfish for trout anymore, but I really don't see a lot of guys running those all chrome colors, the chrome or all metallic colors, the chrome, the all gold. I love those patterns. So there's really two sizes of flatfish I fish, and then we'll get back talk a little bit more about color the uh the f5 that's the size you saw me catch that trout on that's the one i use when pan or pan sized trout are in the mix or when i'm at a lake that has small forage like lake davis where the fish feed on a lot of bugs that's the smaller version that's the f5 version if there's bigger trout around or the fish are used to eating bigger items i like to go with the f7 an F7. I'll just kind of put them side by side for comparison purposes right there. So eh, it's probably, I don't know, I'd say the F5 is about 30% smaller than the F7. Um, talking about colors, the absolute classic color all over the country when you're trout fishing with a flatfish is the frog pattern. And up in the Sierras, nothing better. Frog pattern all day long. It seldom disappoints. It's great color. They work great. If you're in doubt of what to tie on, seldom go wrong putting on a frog pattern flatfish. Now, as I said, I like, I like the metallics. I like the chromes and I love this one. This was a color developed for California river salmon fishing, but they make it into small versions too. And that color is the California watermelon. It's got the chartreuse. It's got the chrome. It's got the pink on the belly. But that is just a, that's just a winner, man. I, I've caught a lot of fish on this one, and uh, I don't know, I just like to put it on for fun. It's just such a over-the-top color. I just, I just really enjoy it. When I got that on, on my line, I got a smile on my face. So, if you think there's big fish around and you're fishing clear water, nothing seems to work as well as an orange lure a lot of times. Orange Rapalas, and of course, your bright orange flatfish, or in this case, the orange with the uh, black spots. That's a great pattern at Shasta, Pardee. Um, this draw strikes for really big trout for whatever reason. I mean, it's just blinding. Oh, look at that orange lure, but they really like it. Finally, here's one of my secret lures. I don't see a lot of people using this one either. Low light conditions or overcast rainy days, this lure can just be amazing. And I'm talking about the black with the chartreuse spots. I was up at Collins Lake one day a few years ago. It was spitting rain, it was a little bit windy, and I could not keep the trout off of this. And I was having trouble getting hit at all. I tried all my usual stuff, Castmasters, XLs, Rapalas, nothing. Put one of those on out of impulse, and I can't remember how many I caught. More than a dozen trout up to about three pounds. So that's a great, that's a great presentation for low light conditions. But anyway, final words. If you don't have some flatfish in your tackle box, which a lot of the younger guys these days, they don't have any flatfish in their tackle box, you should get a few. Um, they can save the day for you when the going gets tough. And even if the going's not tough, if you want to troll slowly, um, they're just a dynamite lure. They produce a lot of fish. They have produced a lot of trout for a long time. And the trout haven't changed. They're going to continue to produce trout as long as people keep putting them on the end of their line. So if you don't have any flat fish, get some. If you got some, use them more often. You're not going to be disappointed. Get out there, catch some fish on one of the lures your grandfather likely fished with, and uh, just have a good time. Anyway, I'll catch you next time. This is Kel Kellogg signing off. Go out there and get some of those trout. Look at that stud of a rainbow. Wow. What a beautiful fish. Incredible. He's heavy. <laughs> Super heavy. Wow.
Very nice.